Kwato Sub County Kasanda District are appealing to for training rather and modern agriculture skills to carry out farming activities. This was during the familiarization tour of National Farmers Leadership Center in Kampiringisa PG District. <laughs> from Wakiso, Rukunjiri, Kayunga and Bugweri are at a four-day sensitization and training workshop on SMU and PDM at the National Farmers Leadership Center in MPG. The leaders toured gardens of maize, banana plantations, groundnuts, passion fruits, coffee, among others. In the government, we have to take the parish model. We have to take the parish model. Mazima to sing and get to you Sana. Government sing and let us say in Taco. Netuba and got solo Kumusana, Netufuna, a Yuma, a solo of Kirida, Umbera Yomusana, Sulok Wanga to Nenis, Umaka Gafe, Awamu, the government of Kuzawa. Paris Modo Batuyamba, Nadaru Kuchuse, Mizinga, and to Daku Jomurembe. Netufuna, Mizinga Jomurem, and Tuva Kujine Jiloko, and Jia Mizinga Jomurem, Jisokuva Mombis of Guera. The familiarization tour involved leaders from SMU supported districts of Rukonjiri, Kayunga and Bugweri. The president of SMU in Uganda, Engineer Ian Chayune, asked the SMU leaders to support government programs, especially the PDM using the skills acquired. The Paris Development Model, which is in making, is one of the best models which we in Semaundong we have been applying since we started Semaundong. Semaundong, although it is on the village level, and the other one is on parish level. But at the end of the day, you find that the parishes are actually taking over the villages. And uh, finally, even in, when we talk about villages, we are talking about individual homes. So there is no big difference. Look at its uh, pillars. When you look at agriculture as one of its first pillars, we are dealing with agricultural produce. The Agriculturalist and Principal National Farmers Leadership Center, or Kwaja Bosco, advised farmers in the country to embrace commercial farming and value addition to their produce. Since these people are already in groups, they can now see that they transform from that time of producing to that level of processing and value addition. Because if you process, you can get a better price at the market. For example, if it is maize, we have told them, it is not viable to sell grains of maize, but if they would process that maize into flour, pack and sell, they will get more, more money. But the issue of the market still remains what? Uh, challenging. The over 60 participants were awarded certificates of attendance as appreciation especially on the pillars of SMU and PDM of changing their mindset. Sandra Kahonde, Salongo Kasvante, UBC News. Minor Minister for Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Frank Tumwebaze, has tipped National Leadership Institute, Changkwansi, to boost agriculture production at the facility. He was handing over a farm tractor to the Director, National Leadership Institute, Nali, Brigadier General Charles Kisembo, at the Ministry's Agricultural Stores in Kampala. 140 million farm tractor donated to National Leadership Institute Nali is part of government's effort to boost agriculture mechanization. Handing over the tractor, Minister Frank Tumwebaze said government is committed to agriculture mechanization for food security. The strategy of supporting agriculture is a hybrid one. Number one, we are targeting the smallholder farmers through partial development model, which gives them quick access to capital at the, in their circle at the parish. Because before this were the unbanked group, if somebody has no collateral, how can I borrow from a commercial bank? Even if government puts money in a commercial bank for, for, for agriculture credit. So now government has taken money to the parish, to the parish. For the smallholder farmers, but we have also realized that these smallholder farmers need the support of the large-scale farmers. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Major General David Kasura Chomukama, urged the public to ensure the tractors are utilized. The parish development model, as the Minister said, is a game changer in the development of our country because we are putting development at the bottom, at the, at the smallest unit that you have. And this 
to stimulate production at that level, you need appropriate mechanization at that level. So you need, for example, you have 10,954 parishes in Uganda. My dream is to make sure that each of these parishes has appropriate mechanization. The director, National Leadership Institute, Brigadier General Charles Chisembo, appreciated the ministry for the donation. It's going to help us uh, put into practice what we have been teaching. Much of what we, has been, we have been teaching has been, you know, at theoretical level, theory. So we are going to put into practice what we have been teaching. Two, we are going to produce, we have engaged in an MOU with MAIF. So we're going to sit together and see what uh, productive enterprises we can put in place. But Government is currently distributing tractors to large-scale farmers and group farmers across the country. Sudat Kaye, UBC News. And on a sad note, four intern students from uh, Navyevia Forestry College in Masindi District have died in a fatal accident along the Hoima Kaiso Tonya Road. The fatal accident occurred at 7 a.m. near Chamukunjuki Trading Center in Chitoba, Saab County, after the victims attached to Core Woods Limited in Hoima District were going to harvest timber in Bujawe Forest in Kitoba, Saab County. Now, the four were riding on a motorcycle registration number UDW280K and were knocked from the rear by a Toyota Wish registration number UBK654V that was from Basiruka Trading Center heading to Hoima City. So all these were on the same motorcycle and they all died on the spot. And the, the probable cause of this accident is attributed to a reckless driving. Because now the driver whose particulars are yet to be established is on run. And the both the motorcycles and the, the motorcycle and the motor vehicles the being toward the toward the at the, our uh, Oima Central Police Station. President Yoweri Museveni has advised the striking arts teachers to return to class. Now on his Twitter handle, the President and Minister for Education and Sports, Janet Museveni, were this afternoon meeting leaders of the Uganda National Teachers Union, NINATU, in their regional clusters at Kololo Ceremonial Grounds. President Museveni assured them that while government acknowledges the issues raised by the art teachers, government is also aware of salary issues from other workers such as the army, police officers, who are equally important to the growth and development of the country. He said government has provided a position as pledged to competitively remunerate workers guided by a science-led strategy. He added that this does not mean government has forgotten about others, but choosing to prioritize the few and others can be handled later. He says government must finish one problem at a time. The arts teachers had earlier insisted uh, uh, had earlier insisted on their presentation that government should use the available resources to improve salaries across the board, but the president says whilst this is possible, it does not solve the salary issue. He quoted that it is Okumera Mera in court, court and court, sprinkling, where everyone will get a little and then next year everyone will strike.
Relatedly, the best performing schools in Iganga have defied a directive by the teacher's umbrella body, UNATO, to go on a sit-down strike and instead continued to conduct lessons. Schools like Iganga Boys Boarding, Berkeley High, were conducting lessons normally. The two schools started in the early 1970s and have for the past few years led the district in the academic performance, producing best pupils in primary leading examinations. A teacher at Iganga Boarding Primary School who preferred anonymity said, much as they support the idea by some of their fellow teachers to go on a strike, they cannot stand back all their pupils since the school is boarding. The deputy head teacher at Berkeley High School, Godfrey Ben Waiswa, said they cannot betray parents. This is a boarding primary girls' school. Therefore, as they are here, we can't send them home. We have to teach them because their parents entrusted them to us. But we have to teach them. That's why we are teaching them. Schools like Wagodo. Kawete, located in Kawete sub-county, and Wairama in Nachigo sub-county in Iganga district, are still on strike. President District Commissioner Iganga, Sadala Wandera, said he was aware some of the schools had not gone on strike, just like others across the district. Information about uh, some teachers who are not teaching, but good enough, the boarding schools we visited, uh, the teachers are there and the students are there learning. So nothing, uh, it has, this strike has not interrupted them. I want to inform teachers, we've gotten instructions to uh, get the, 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 the list of all those teachers who are not reporting. So at, at the end of the month, they will be scrapped off the, uh, the payroll. Just the reason being, uh, the government cannot continue paying teachers when they are not teaching. There is no justification for, uh, for the payment. Now the sixth cohort National Water Sewage Corporation staff under uh, Kampala Water have completed a utility management and mindset change refresher course. The staff participated in a refresher course that ran for three weeks, that's from the 7th of June to the 1st of July 2022 at Scripture Union Campsite in Kauku. Brigadier General Felix Kulaije, a representative from the UPDF, commended National Water and Sewerage Corporation for their retooling of staff. <laughs> What led me, uh, Honorable Sarah, I was having an interview on uh, Salt TV. And the opening remarks of the, model, of the interviewer was, we are oppressed by the economy. That was the opening remarks. And he has come to discuss with me matters of security. But his statement was, we are oppressed by the economy. That's already insecurity in his mind. And we all tend to think that cash is the source of comfort. Everything starts from our mind. I remember our first day in Sarah, you may remember, you recall, we were not earning anything. But every day, dedicatedly, we reported for work. And two, because this country is getting Seek every day about greed, or rather with greed. Interestingly, none of us goes with whatever we have acquired. And when we come here for three weeks with our staff, we instill in them the level of engagement to be loving to their jobs. Accountability means that you take also responsibility. And if we call for an emergency, people should be ready to move in immediately. And when you call in for people who are distressed, there's no water, water shortages, a pipe burst, any shortage, they should respond. Within four to eight hours, a solution should have been delivered so that our customers continue to enjoy service. So this course here, together with partnership with the UPDF, particularly for the cadership, in terms of uh, making people feel 
and to take responsibility, you become national locators. Normandat RDC Betty Akello Otekati has threatened to arrest and charge any person selling and buying goods distributed by government through the office of the Prime Minister. She was flagging off the distribution of goods to reformed warriors and, war and youth from Laro, Apeliep, Chorcho, sub counties in Amadat district. 925 goats for Greater Loro. Last month, President Yoel Kagutam Seven launched improved goats and iron sheet distribution to the reformed warriors and youth in Karamoja sub region. This was a package to support the disarmament operation in Karamoja and transform lives of reformed warriors. Today, over 900 hybrid goats have been distributed to the beneficiaries in sub counties of Loro, I believe, as Amdata District Resident Commissioner Betty Akello explains. Distributing them two weeks ago. And this is now the second batch out of the 4,000 Galagot even out in Amudat district. And this time round, we are, give, we are distributing these Galagots in Iloro. are going to be distributed to the reformed youth that are within these sub-counties that I've just mentioned. And this one will help them improve their livelihood. Beneficiaries thanked government for empowering them as it will deter youth from cattle wrestling. <laughs> Help us and also want the government to bring more for also the rest of our brothers to receive from so that we avoid this issue of raiding because we have been losing many of our brothers, friends, even fathers yet to know that it is not good to raid. To sang His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta for providing us with the goats which have served us a good life which will help us for income and milk production. However, Aradisia Kelo said she is going to arrest those selling goods distributed by government and the buyers. Them in the market. I have directed my local the local leaders to arrest whoever will be found selling these goods. Number one, the goods will be removed from them. And the goods will be given to this, those other people who also want to benefit from them. Number two, of course they will also face court because that is sabotaging government programs. And then for the buyers, they will also be arrested and they will face court. Meanwhile, beneficiaries decry limited access to animal drugs and insecurity, but RDC Akelu promised that security forces are working hard to restore peace in the district. Each beneficiary is to receive five high gala goods, four local females, and, and one high bread he got. Doing this on behalf of the President of I'm Uganda, the... His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, Serenyo Ma. Well, with that, we take a quick break. We return with more details. This is News Tonight. Today in history. On this day in history, then Vice President and Minister of Defense, Paul Mwanga was acquitted and later on the same day rearrested outside the courtroom by the NRA soldiers. Paul Mwanga served as the Vice President and Minister of Defense from 1981 to 1985 when Obote's government was overthrown. He was acquitted of detention with knowledge of murdering Joseph Kato and Vincent Maweji on 6th June 1981. Justice C.M. Kato wrote that the circumstantial evidence did not prove the accused guilty of the offense. I pronounce the accused not guilty and accordingly set him free unless he has another case against him. The Tales of Kasozi brought to you by Uganda Communications Commission.
Hello, this is Kasozi. How can I help you? Congratulations, congratulations. Oh, one good day. Bon good day? But I haven't entered any competition. Oh, what day, Since you use your phone every day, we have randomly selected you as one of our loyal customers. And you have won a brand new pickup. Hey, so how do I get this pickup? The pickup is in Namave. All we have to do is quickly bring it to you. You know, we are delivering many of them. So, just send us 100k for fuel via mobile money and we'll bring it to you. But Chief, I'm in no hurry to receive it. Namambe is just here. Keep it at your warehouse, give me directions and I'll get time to pick it up. Ah, vow now we. If you don't have money, just say. Tonfera, never send money to strangers. Winners of competitions are contacted through official channels and are never asked to pay for anything. Stay tuned for what Kasozi does next. Don't fit up. Refrain from unnecessary engagements with strangers over the phone. This message is powered by UCC, MTN, Airtel, Bank of Uganda and NPSP Association. Yellow fever is a serious disease that is caused by the yellow fever virus from monkeys. The virus is transmitted to humans by a bite of an infected Aedes mosquito. The yellow in the name refers to the yellowing of the body, mainly the eyes, mouth and the palms. Other signs and symptoms like rapid onset of fever, headache, general body weakness, loss of appetite, vomiting usually appear in the first three to six days of being bitten by an infected mosquito. Remove potential mosquito breeding sites such as stagnant water and bushes around your home and sleep under an insecticide treated net every night to avoid being bitten by mosquitoes. Parents, take all children aged 9 months to the nearest health facility for vaccination. During the same visit, the child will also receive measles and rubella vaccine. Adults can as well get lifelong vaccination against yellow fever. Notify the health worker about any suspected yellow fever case at the nearest health facility. Please note, Yellow fever is not transmitted from person to person by contact. For more information, call the Ministry of Health toll-free line. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from World Health Organization and UNICEF. Get the best entertainment for any budget. With Go TV, you will have great entertainment for as little as 13,000 Ugandan shillings per month. Go TV, great stories. Zidiwano, Go TV Uganda. Love it. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months at only 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings, making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only. Airtel, the smartphone network the oil and gas moment brought to you by petroleum authority of uganda creating lasting value in uganda's oil journey in order to be contracted to supply goods and services for oil activities in Uganda, you must register on the National Suppliers Database. Between 2017 and 2021, close to 400 Ugandan entities were awarded various contracts to supply goods and services to the sector. Uh, Tech Lab Limited is a geosciences company that has been offering uh, geotechnical and geophysical investigation services to the East African market since its inception in uh, 2002. Our experience working with AMA Energy has been a pleasurable one. Uh, the seismic surveys have always been on our radar and when this opportunity came up we put together a winning bid and became the first Ugandan company to provide seismic services under an oil and gas contract in Uganda. Registration on the National Suppliers Database is free visit www.pau.go.ug creating lasting value in Uganda's oil journey 
Meet Professor Petero. He knows something every hustler in UG is gonna love. Oh, see. You say I was just trying to uh, get the document to register for air telemanage. Yeah. You don't need the documents. You just said it for register. Oh, What's going on here? He sells things from the shop and behind my back, he gets the money and gives it to his vocal friends. <laughs> <laughs> but just get out your money pay so that all money comes direct to your business wallet and only you, the owner, have access to it. Just dial star 185 star 10 star 10 hash and now you are on. No waiting. No. Huh? This insanity is sweet. Give them also. I only take Airtel Money Pay. It's easy and secure. Yes, become a safer and more efficient cash free business today. Easy. No mixing your business money with your Kameza money. Now, that's efficient. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. Getting a birth certificate is as easy as one, two, three. One, get a birth notification record stamped by a medical officer from a medical facility where the baby was born. Or from a sub-county chief if the birth occurred in the community. Two, go to the nearer offices in your area and present the notification record, a copy of the parents or guardians national ID, and a bank payment slip of 5,000 shillings for citizens and $40 for non-citizens. Three, apply by filing NERA Form 3 from NERA offices or download it from the NERA website www.nira.go.ug A birth certificate will then be issued to you. Birth certificates to refugees born in Uganda are free of charge. This message is brought to you by Nira. Hey guys, please let's have a brief meeting. See that? Calls, data, SMS, shareable among five people. What? And it includes free Airtel TV. Do you guys know what that means? Means no worry. <laughs> Enjoy life worry free with Airtel Smart Plan. Shareable among five people. Use every day and pay at the end of the month. <laughs> They've also added show much. Oh. Airtel, the smartphone network. Welcome back. You are still watching News Tonight. Now in business news, women in business have commended uh, President Yori Museveni for instituting measures that help revamp the economy from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. The chairperson of the Network of African Business Women Uganda, Florence Kasule, says th although there are initiatives for revamping women's economic recovery, women's representation on the task forces implementing the parish development model is key. Add women who go to different levels, but they keep quiet. Once they Women leaders want parish developmental model task forces to be gender inclusive and where possible with over 40 percent representation being women. We thank the president because he's promoting the parish development model to uplift the standards of women. We are also lobbying to make sure that the task forces put in place to promote the parish development model are gender inclusive. We are proposing over 40 percent representation. The chairperson network of African business women Uganda, Florence Kasule, was speaking at a meeting of business and women leaders at Hotel Africana in Kampala. Today government is saying we want to see our people have money in their pockets through the parish development model. But for the organizations in this room, what is it you have done? To say that a woman is producing, we are suffering today because of COVID, because we can't produce. There is market in Congo, there is market in Kenya, but where is the produce? This comes at a time when Grace Marshall Trust's fund support women's recovery and poverty eradication initiatives by building and institutionalizing a pool of African women leaders and women's networks to influence policy that promote inclusive economic recovery for women in Africa. Women-led organizations are failing to formalize because we do not trust structures. Governance is very important. Governance means sharing power. It means sharing control. Please embrace mergers and acquisitions. 
stakeholders observed that full economic recovery will not be realized once women leaders do not get out of their cocoons to support grassroots women. Can you help on the marketing? I've seen a skilling center in Zambia. They have helped them to get a market in Walmart. So these women wake up to do the earrings eh, knowing that there is market. Yes. There is nothing as bad as producing something expecting 30,000 and you actually earn 5,000. Uganda Law Society President Foena Wall in her keynote address challenged women to formalize their workforce and operations to realize their business's full potential. The head of domestic investment, Uganda Investment Authority, Winnie Lawok Olue, said women's approach largely account for the stagnation of their business experience. The women appealed to government and other relevant stakeholders to work on protecting local businesses and securing markets so that the women's businesses are not only revamped but also grow. There is market in Congo, there is market in Kenya. But where is the produce? It is high time we change our thinking. The initiative will enhance continent-wide interventions where Grace Marshall Trust has chapters. Habimana Deo compiled this report. And Macquarie University has partnered with the Private Sector Foundation to equip new graduates with skills demanded in the world of work. The partnership is targeting those students being sponsored by the MasterCAD Foundation Student Scholarship Program. Let's take a look. On that event, the private sector foundation commits to bind on their member companies, industries and other employers to offer internship for new graduates to acquire market demanding skills. We would love to be able to provide these services to a wider number of students. What's, uh, what stops us from scaling fully are the funds. But it's something that we would love to partner with any university. As long as they're young people, uh, Uganda has the youngest population. We have a lot of students who are leaving universities, who are looking for jobs, who are even thinking or have to think about creating their own jobs. So they need those skills. So we would love to be able to actually offer this service to a whole lot more because the gap is so big. Makere University has partnered with the private sector to produce market-ready graduates to create decent employment. We train these students, but we always need the experiential learning, which as a university we can't do on our own. That's why we partner with those who are in the different fields of engagement for our students to pick up on those skill sets that we train them while they are at the university. MasterCard Foundation in this cohort has recommended 61 new graduates to the private sector for internship. So in this preparation, we give you the additional skills. We are lucky that private sector foundation did a skills mapping for the next five years. That's the reason we partnered with them, to deliver the skills that have been mapped as a requirement for the next five years. The partnerships between academic institutions and the private sector are projected to reduce unemployment and underemployment. Abdul Nasele Luwama, UBC News. And district local governments in West Nile have uh, collaborated with the private sector to organize West Nile Business Expo 2022. The Business Expo will address challenges to business opportunities among small and medium scale businesses within the region. Local governments in West Nile and the private sector in a GIZ project, Arise project, have organized a West Nile Business Expo 2022. This is aimed at enabling small and medium businesses within the sub-region to unlock their potentials in trade. The expo is expected to attract businessmen and women from Kampala, other sub-regions of northern Uganda, refugees from the various settlements including the neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan. The commercial officer of Arua district, John Ezuma, says many business operators in the region are not aware of business opportunities, a gap that can best be bridged through such business expos. Most of all business communities are not aware of many opportunities. This can only come into light when 
situations of this nature or activities of this nature are organized. With the Uganda's porous borders with DRC and South Sudan, there are many businesses in West Nile that are not being registered by Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Caroline Ochanda, a representative from the private sector, noted that operating illegal businesses always remain as a barrier in digging out opportunities to thrive in business. We know that there are very many businesses out there, but they are not formal. People are just doing something. But we want people to understand that it's very important to formalize your business because you'll have other opportunities if you formalize your businesses. We have a lot of opportunities with the banks, with the, for, for grants. According to Uganda Registration Service Bureau, there are 800,000 registered businesses in Uganda as a majority are operated illegally. To that effect, station head of URSB in a rural office, William Draco, confirms that URSB will also take services to the people during the expo in order to understand why many people do not want to legalize their businesses and address the fears. And we're also asking our, our minds, why are businesses not registered yet we have come here? So this, this uh, expo, during this expo we are going to sit there we want to have one-on-one -on -one with the people. Why are they facing this problem? What is the problem? So we are going to, to demystify eh, some of the lingering questions in people's mind, which, which are either uh, out of ignorance or... Joseph Odamam, UBC News. Are you a player in the tourism sector with a struggling business following the COVID pandemic? UDB, in partnership with European Union, is providing financial assistance to businesses operating in the tourism sector. You can access subsidized loan with grants, loan with a turnover of up to five years, free business advisory services, and free environmental impact assessment. Visit www.udbl.co.ug slash call for applications to apply. Deadline for submission is 31st October 2022 at 5 p.m. For more information, please call 0414-355-509. Oh, Susan, I want to propose to Rose. Eh? Yes, and this time I am serious. Have you guys had sex? Duh, of course. And have you had sex without using condoms? Hey, <laughs> guy, you're curious. I'm more of concerned. Are you having sex with other people? Hey, hello. Uh, is this an interview or what? No, just things you should think about. Uh, do you know Rose's HIV status? Okay, uh, this is serious. Should I be worried? It is actually serious. Do you know your HIV status? Mm, uh, I think I am safe. <clears throat> <clears throat> Many times we get into situations that put us at risk of HIV. However, the first step to ending HIV is getting tested and knowing your results. It's time up HIV. Call 0800-211-046 or text 8080 toll free for more information about how to prevent HIV. This message is brought to you by Ministry of Health with support from USAID.
Well, that's it for news tonight for now. We do return at 10 o'clock. Elizabeth Nakakuni on sign language. I am Rhoda Ngonzi. For now, we leave you with Kutessa Mili with the weather update. Thanks for tuning on UBC. My name is Kutessa Mili with your weather update. We are still experiencing sunny conditions in most parts of the country and seeing the satellite picture, we are having a continent ranging over the tip of South Africa, pushing in the hazy, dry conditions in most parts of our country and the cold winds bring us the wind that we are experiencing lately and the sunny conditions. Tomorrow morning though, we expect to wake up with sunny conditions in the southern sector of our country and sunny intervals in northern towards the east of our